Oh, somebody say you're welcome to church. Glory be to God. God has been so faithful to us. Somebody say God has been so faithful. He is a faithful God. He has been so faithful to us. You know, life is a journey. Likewise, death. Life is a journey we will all make. And we're making a journey and leading to a destination that none of us can talk about it now. It's a long journey, just like somebody who has died. He, she made a journey, a far long journey. So when you see that life is a journey, and the way you are following it, it looks like it's going to end today. It never ends like that. Because it's a long journey. The way I want it to be, this is how I want it to be. I need it now, at least this month. At least from now to three months. Life is a journey. And this journey we're talking about is not, is not a journey you can make on yourself or by yourself. It's a journey that he has to guide you the way you make the journey. He has to guide you, direct you, be with you the way you're going to make the journey. It's not something you say, I want it now, let it happen now. Never happened like that. God has loved his people and his love never departs. But some people believe God loves them and hates them. Never God does that. God is not a man. Okay. In the beginning, God created you. Man in his own image. He gave you an eye the power to speak as I'm talking to you. He gave you and I the privilege to live all over the world. And some of you were born in another country and you decided to leave that country to another country. You're still in the world. Some of you are born in another country. You leave this place to another dimension. You are still in the world. God gave you the privilege to travel all over. As you are traveling all over the world, you see it, that God has given you privilege through and through. You are going up, you are coming in. This is long journey. And sometimes some people in this country, where I'm talking to you, I'm speaking to you in Africa here, West Africa. You decided I'm done with West Africa. You travel to another person's country. Maybe you decide to travel, maybe, Europe. And somebody that was born in Europe say, I'm, I don't like to stay in Europe. I want to come to Africa here. So where are you are going out from? Somebody like to come and stay that place. The privilege of God for us to fly all over. Where you will stay and feel more comfortable. Maybe there's something or the target you have for your life where you stay and find peace. All I'm saying, God is love. That is something God wants you to know today. That thing is this. The privileges that God has given to you. Do you have any return to God with that privileges? Have you made any return to God with the privileges that has been given to you? How can I return? Okay, now read for you. I'm taking the book of Haggai, chapter 2, from verse, from verse 6 to 9. Haggai. Glory be to God. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, I will shake the heavens. The earth, 
the sea and the dry land. I will shake the nations and the desert of all nations shall come and we fall this and we fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 8. Are you there? Verse 8. We read together verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 9. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. In this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. I stop here. Verse 9 says, you are created by God. Apostle Paul says something, that your body is the house of God. Hmm? God said, if I want to bless you, your body, your life, the life you live today will be greater than the former life. When the blessings of God comes around you, the life you are living today shall be greater. You know, when I pick up ministry, I, I cover up ministry, going ministry step by step, step by step. I'm so intelligent and uh, I like loving, serving God. Then I bring myself down. I was a stammerer. I'm not more learned, but I love to speak a language that everybody will understand. What kind of language am I going to speak? I grew in a church called Orthodox Church, and a particular church that used the native dialect to minister. But in me, I never accepted that I'll use a particular language to minister because I believe that minister that God has planted in me is universal ministry. So universal ministry simply means that I'm going to use a language that everybody will understand. And that language simply means English language. Then look at my challenges in life. I was not opportune to run schools, go to schools freely, primary freely, secondary freely, high institution freely, because of my background. I get what I'm saying. Because of my background, my parents, they are not interested in education. But as God may have it, I don't find that there's a miracle in the things of God. In me, I like to run English church, a church that I can speak a language that everybody at least 70% of the people of the world hears English so that they can listen to my teachings and follow me up on social media and on physical like you, some of you here. Then I keep on doing all this and making the effort. Then God said that when he saw the effort you are making in whatever you do, he said your life of Thoma cannot be the same in future. So packaging is not on your own, but the step you make, God will remove you and repackage you for his glory. Okay. So this has happened, and when I was in ministry, I'm among the ushers. I study and I work as ushers to know the work of usher. I work in a higher to know the work of Chaya, I work in, in band, and become, I became band leader to know about the work. I'm a minister of God. I became the least minister among the ministers, and I'm doing that in order to get that from people ahead of me. And today, some of them ahead of me then, I am now ahead of them because maybe the effort of the glory of God. So God sees something in you and bring changes. That's something he will see and bring changes. When Jesus Christ and his ministry, ministers we are going, he said, love me. You want to follow me, keep my commandment. Learn the language that he speaks, the first step he made, the way he coordinates and teach the work of Jesus that will make you to be a follower of Christ. The 
Some of you here, few months, few weeks, few years, you are having health challenges. I'm talking to you now. Some people are having health challenges. And God come in his own infinite message and touch you, a touch of healing. And you were made whole. He saved you from how challenges that you use the body to serve him. Then what did you do when you regain unconsciousness? Never make any time for God to serve him. You never make any time for God to worship him. Some of you, you were born ugly. As a child, you are grown, you know you are ugly. People know you are ugly. But in process of time, God removed you. You become beautiful. You become handsome. But God has no impact or any impartation in your beauty or your handsome. You use it for your own selfish interest. Do you know that some of you, we are born in a family that is so wretched. Then you ask question before I finish. Why must I be born in a family that is wretched? God learned foundation all over the world. Maybe the foundation he has learned through your ancestors, they made me sick with the foundation. That's why you were born in that family to bring changes. Somebody said I was one to bring change. Now he began to use you little by little. As he was using you, your family has never experienced one million currency for the first time. But God used you to bring one million cash in your account. Your family has not lived in a good house. God used you to bring good house in your family. Your family has not seen the light. God used you to bring light. A wise man says it's not by mind. That's what Jesus said. It's not by my power but by the spirit of God. Everything I see come to pass. When I was coming up, I used to see men of God on television, teaching, preaching, giving the word of God always entices me. I said, is it possible for me to be in television, to teach like these people, to wear suits like them? That's the question I asked myself years ago. But God made it possible that that thing I was asking has come to pass in my own lifetime. What did I use it to do with God? God gave you the days you leave from January to December, 365 or 366 days God has given to you. Do you know that many people will consume the 365 days or 366 days without appearing in the presence of God from January to December? As if it is their right or their best right to spend all the days without coming to praise God for the life. Is it good? Hello? God has been so kind to you in the sense that some years ago, some of you have children, grown-up children, but none of your children ask about you. But after the set and done, the prayers, intervention of the men and women of God, God turned the heart and the spirit of your children to come and started taking care of you. From the time you start seeing lights, you never appear to God again. And some of you here has a lot of challenges at the past. I met somebody. You have not used cell phone. And God sent somebody, give him cell phone. Give her cell phone. And when you open your cell phone, you use it for your selfish interest. You never use your cell phone to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ on social media. Has God done wrong to you? When we talk about amazing grace, the graces of God alive in our life is amazing. But we all take 
advantage of the grace of God alone. As somebody looking for a contract, somebody looking for a business, and you stand in the house of God, you come before the men of God or women of God, you pray and men vows, God, if you did give me this money, if you did give me this opportunity in business, I'll pay one tenth of all I have made. Like Abraham has made the same covenant we get. And God in his infinite mercy give you the opportunity of the money. You never remember the vow you have vowed to God. The money you have never seen all the days of your life. Then God gave you that money. But you find it so difficult to take out the one tenth of it and say, God, this is my tithe. I take a part of it and say, God, this is my seed. You eat everything alone with the people who has no knowledge, the source of the income of that money, like your girlfriend, boyfriend, like your beloved ones, family members. You people are eating alone, enjoying alone. But when the money dries, you never call any of these people for another opportunity. You return back to him again. Say, Father, I've finished the money. I need another one. If you give me another one, I made a mistake. I'm going to pay. God said, all the silvers you have and the gold you have belongs to him. Is that what we read? Is it what we read there? He said, silvers, gold are mine. It's only a wise woman gone to the house of God. She went to the house of God and knelt down and prayed to God. Say, Father, if you bless my womb, woman mocking me, Penina hurting me. She has been insulting me everywhere. But if you give me a child, I will return that child to you. And God gave her a child. After three years, she returned the child, Samuel, to God. Agreement. Then God says, since you can return this one, and God gave her, gave her children, not a child anymore. Men, women, seven of them. Almost every year she keep on being pregnant and then at a point he said, God, it's okay. <laughs> it is okay. Today God will give you a child in throne of any year. You can't bring the child for, to serve God. You cannot push your children to worship God. You were in problem years ago, months ago. People are hurting your life to destroy you. And God fights your battle. And God destroy your enemy. And then all the things you will do, giving excuses, giving excuses from excuses. You are looking for somebody who is not witnessing your parents. You don't ask your church member why she is not coming to church. When you were in problem, has you ever connect anybody while you are not coming to church? You were coming to God because you need the salvation. Salvation has come. You want to use salvation to oppose others. In Holy Book, there was a king called King David. He had problem because he made a mistake and God began to torture him. And God used his own son Absalom. When Absalom was arrested at the first time, Absalom was brought at the palace and he covered his face in shame. And it is for the king to judge Absalom for persecution or execution. Absalom is about to face the consequences of execution. But Absalom at the first say, can my law king allow me to pray the prayer of my father? The king was not seeing his face. Because he covered it with vain. And the king said, What kind of prayer of your father that you have cross boundary? Who are you? Who is in bed? Because they did not know that it was Absalom. 
and Absalom prayed the prayer of his father. Do you know the truth? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me to lie down in a grace pouch. He leaded me beside the water. He restored my soul. And King David stood up from his chair. This prayer is my prayer. He prays like me. This is a prayer I pray in my chamber. Who is this person? The veil was taken away from Absalom. He drew down his sword. Go, your sin has been forgiven you. Who can pray the prayer of his father? All my ministers who can act like me. Who can do like me? All my followers. Jesus said, follow my footsteps if you love me. Upon the things I've been with you. I've been with you for some years. Months. What have you gone from me? Your heart is corrupt. God has been so faithful to you. How do you pay him back? You don't pay you the one tenth. You never know the sea. You think about yourself, yourself, yourself. During x mass time, people never remember to go to church. Because you are busy with that thinking that as you are busy during x mass time, some people are in pains in hospitals. Some people are in pain in houses. They are sick. There, there is no money for hospital. But look at you here. Healthy and sound. What did you offer to God? Some of you are homeless. And God gave you a house. Some of you are living in the church. And God gave you a house. What did you use to pay him? But you were like this. Very humble. When you are desperate of this. Some of you are ashamed of themselves. God gave you privilege. Of source of income. What do you use to pay him? The amazing grace of God in our life. Some of you have opportunity of new clothes. You don't use new clothes to come to church. You use old clothes and come to church. Why use new clothes? To go and show friends. Who has no knowledge of the source of that clothes? Some of you are not married today. You pray to God, if you give me a husband, if you give me a wife, my family will worship you. Lucky for you, God has blessed you with a good home. On Sunday morning, nobody is going to church. You talk about going out for good time. On Saturday morning, being on Sabbath day, nobody going to church. You are talking about good time. Nobody goes to church. On Friday afternoon, nobody go to mass or actually to mocks as a Muslim. You are not talking about to go to mass. You are talking about good time. What has God done? Up God, what has God done against you? Some of you are slaves. To get admission is something. To be a student is very good. But when you enter school, your shoulder hangs up. He never remember it was God's doing. He is the owner of silver and gold. The owner of all opportunities. Whosoever he pleases, he will give. And he say, if you believe, your former life can never remain the same. I will change you. Which he has been doing in your life. A man, a wise man in the Holy Book, a prophet to say, if you people don't want to serve God, my family and I, we worship God. His name was called Joshua. He was a prophet of God. You can be a prophet. That does not mean you serve God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some people have the divine call, but they don't have anything in relationship with God. You have divine call, but you don't have relationship with God. You use your divine call for your own personal selfish interest. I'm this, I'm that. Not God is this, not God is that. 
Where has God wronged you? Some of your mates are useless on the street. But God gave you the intellectual. You reason like a man. You act like a man. Where has God wronged against you? If I got married, I will take care of my husband. Now you got married, you want to ride your husband. This is not a vow you made. <laughs> Look at this girl. Your own is better. God has given you a husband. Look at how you are talking to your husband. I can't talk to my husband like that. An opportunity will come. You want to talk to your husband, you mess him up, you just see him as your maid. When you lose it, you start crying. When you see him going out, he say, I don't know one stupid girl that, that done something and do juju against my husband. No. Your attitude is depriving you your joy. Turn today and experience the amazing grace of God in your life. If I have a wife, I'll take care of him. I'll take care of my wife. My, I'll take care of her. God bless you with a woman. Now you're using your woman anyhow. In public, your wife looks so tattered. You made money and give others. You never think about your home. But you vowed, if I get a wife, I'll take care of. God bless me with children, I'll take care of my children. And God has blessed you with children. That you fold your hand. Some of you have opportunity to make money. But your family never eats your money. Somebody like my own father, biological father. Outsiders are eating the money of my father. Where has God wrong against you? Remember your personal record. Remember where, who you were. Where has he wrong against you? Today, when I'm coming up in ministry, there's so many things that was going on in my mind. I had an opportunity to stay with somebody here. He said to me, I remember when you and I traveled, you are always conscious of your identity. When we come out to buy food, the way you act, you don't show people who you are. Always conscious of your identity. The vow I made to God. I will protect the image of God all the days of my life. In good time and in bad time. In 2019, I'm sorry to say this. There was a young pastor that passed through my heart. We met him where we went for a program, birthday program for a, a colleague, a pastor that had a birthday or, or celebration here in this town. You were there and um, about three drivers or two. You were there, Dickin, and the security guards. And when we come in, the man of God saw me as I was coming. He was so happy. And so many men of God came to receive me. Among these men of God, there was one of them who happened to be my boy. When he saw me, he came to shake me as others, my mates, were shaking me. I was looking at him. I dropped back my hand. So you can't show people that I am your master. That's why I asked him. He said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just left him. After a few years, he called me on phone. Last two years. He said he wants to see me. That he's dying, that his minister has shot at this, that, and I said, you can't see me. Jesus said, he that praised me in public, I will praise you in public. He that denied me in public, I will deny you in public. As I'm not going to see you. Because the life that he was living, why did I say was? This young guy came from my state. 
and I serve under his uncle and a bishop. Whenever the bishop comes here, I pay homage to him. Because you have joined bad life. You don't know who is who. You have joined bad group to make your selfish interests. And you have no respect for anointed men of God. Many are called, but God knows he's anointed. And he began to walk with people out of the faith because of money. If you want to be famous, the hard work you do will make you famous. Not the tricks can never make you famous. People may be afraid of you at the same time they are targeting you. Then, last Sunday, he fell into trap. And they kidnapped him. The people he has wronged. You do people anyhow. You mess people anyhow, up anyhow. And they killed him last Sunday. I do not feel sorry for him. They are two now. Two of them are still in mortuary. The one that we killed, that should be last year. And two of them are friends. The same way this one was killed is the same way this one was killed. And somebody who is serving God associating with native doctors a child of god call yourself a child of god going to a native what has god done against you the holy Bible said do not bow down to any idol my glory i will not share with any but you are sharing the glory of god with yourself i don't know what i'm telling somebody here hello the same way the former one I told you about was both of them nine months old. What am I saying? Where has God wronged you? Is that why we are you? We are crying. And he gave you light. He gave you light. You were homeless. He gave you home. You were hungry, he gave you food. You were alone, he gave you a life partner as husband and wife. Some people that has gotten married today, they can't focus in their marriage. Their mind is towards somebody's marriage. You have the code of your own marriage. If you cannot find that their own code, you always make, make, make mistake. God has never wronged anybody. Sons and daughters of the Lord. God loves you. His grace is always available. His opportunity is always available. Yesterday morning, I was in my room. I came down from the bed. I prepared my prayers. I do one or two things. And I remember my father when he was alive. God gave him opportunity upon opportunity. He misused it. I look at the way I'm living comfortable. My father was rich, but he has never lived comfortable in his home. Selfishness. As money is coming in your pocket, you are planning where to go now. Travel. Selfishness. God has never wronged anybody. And I'm telling everybody here, the children that God has given to you is a grace. Amazing. The wife is a grace. Amazing. Husband is a grace. Amazing. 
Not marriage is a grace, amazing. About you is a grace, amazing. The money you have in your account number, grace, amazing. Everything around you, grace, amazing. Some of you are out of mind. Some of you are stranded, but God used somebody to fix you up. And after fixing you up, the person that God used to fix you up, you are looking at that person as your boy. God forbid. Mistake we are making today, we are the cause. The downfalling, the misfortune, the things we see around you. Life you choose is the life you live. A young lady is coming up from being tiny, you start changing. You know, when a young woman is coming up, her body will start changing from hair to toe, not as you were when you were six years or when you were five years. As you are coming up, your body is remoting, remoting the way God wants to remote you or molded you. You see your chest. As when you grow, you look at yourself on the mirror and say, now nah, I'm a woman. So many things come around you. Uncles talk to you. Aunt talk to you. Men can't talk to you. Old, young talk to you. Grace of God. God has no impact in that body. You don't have anything to offer God. You come to house of God, you are doing shakara to God. Now. May God save your life. Your life is amazing. What did I say? Say it again. Your life is amazing. Grace. Return to God and he shall return to you. May you rise. Our power, our glory to you, Holy Father, we work for you. Your life is amazing, Grace. Thank you, Jesus. God, I surrender all these souls. 
May your spirit bless all their souls. May your name remove their image. Accept him. Give them opportunities, opportunities of life. May they praise you and worship you for whatever you have placed in their powers. I bless your destiny. I bless your life. And I bless your name. May God bless you all the days of your life. May his love never depart from you. May you see the goodness of God all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. People celebrate Jesus. Thank you. Make yourself comfortable.